Okay, so for shot two, we're going to do something which is actually going to be really quick to set up, um, but it's going to look like a really nice shot. And this will be the tracking shot as our robot continues his passage down the, the corridor or between those pillars. So the same as we did in shot one, start with a blank scene and add an XREF object and just load in the set like we did before. And then go to file, open or merge. In fact, it's probably best uh, rather than cutting and pasting. Uh, so open file merge and then we'll choose our bot so if we go to our assets folder or the you, for you it will be assets folder mine's in a slightly different location because i'm obviously still creating all the, the different assets and load in the bot and we'll see him pop in there and what we're going to do is if we go to animation right at the bottom of that list we'll have pivot object and we're going to pop our bot into that pivot object and we will animate the path of the pivot and then the bot we can apply motion paths to, things like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom out slightly and twist my way around. And I'm gonna reuse, like I said before, I'm gonna reuse this same section of corridor. So I'm just gonna drag the robot to between two pillars is probably a good place to start. So about there, and then we'll start with the camera kind of over here so it's in a darker area and then it will move forward into the light. Okay, so now I am going to find that the pivot object is facing the wrong way. That's fine. We'll just rotate that round. Make sure you've got the pivot selected in your object manager rather than the robot. And I'm just going to go into the heading section here and type in 180. I'm going to apply that. Uh, it helps if you're in object mode, by the way. If you're in any of the other modes here, say polygon, edge or point, then it won't work. So just go into there, type in 180, hit return or enter, and you'll see the robots flipped around. Okay, so what we need to do is add a position keyframe at the start here and one at the end. So I'm gonna turn off scale keyframing and rotation keyframing. And what I need to do is work out how long I want this shot to last. And I think it should probably really only be five seconds at maximum. So we on 30 frames a second, so five times 30, we're looking at, what's that gonna be? That's gonna be 120, 150 frames. So I can type in 150 here. And that just reduces our timeline down to the maximum that we need. And I'm gonna add a keyframe at this point. I'm gonna to go to the end of my scene and I'm gonna back out in my perspective view just so I can see how far I want him to go. And I want him to get to about here, just between these two pillars here. So I'm going to grab my pivot object and now I'm just gonna move that right hand closer out of the way, um, just so I can grab the axis handle for the object. And to move these controls around, just control, click and drag, and you can place them wherever you want. Okay, so I'm gonna drag him and pop him between those two pillars there. I'm just gonna spin round so I can see how it's looking. That's looking okay, I'm quite pleased with that. And a keyframe, and we'll see now we've got a motion path and if I just look from the top view. Now, this is looking a bit clumsy and messy and not particularly clear uh, with all these lines everywhere. So I'm just gonna go to filter and I'm gonna turn off the grid and we should now see that we can see this much more clearly. So I go back to the beginning, press play, and you'll see that the speed of the robot is ramping up and then ramping down again at the end. And what we can do to change this, if you want to, you can keep it like that if you want, but I'd rather have a a kind of a linear start and then maybe a slow down at the end. Um, or we could do that with the camera, either way will work. Um, but it's just to give a sense of urgency to the start of the shot. Um, we can in fact keep it all linear all the way through. It might work better for the edit because we're gonna have a, a continuous motion where we'll reuse the set and everything like we have this time, um, but we'll have the bot continuing his path. Um, but we're actually gonna look at him from the front view so having that ramping outwards might not actually work in our favor this time round. So it might actually be best to have a very linear kind of velocity for the robot here. In which case you can go into the timeline and I'm just gonna zoom out so I can see everything. And I'm going to select my pivot object, which has only got the two keyframes. And I'm just going to go to frame, uh, where is it, key, and we will choose linear. And now if I drop that pack down out of the way, I'll just spin around and just zoom out so we can see what we're doing. In fact, if I do this in the top view, it might be clearer for you. Back to the beginning of the scene. Now, if I press play, this should be a continuous 
uh, steady linear motion all the way across. The speed should be kind of constant rather than varying. Okay, which is good. Now I do think it's possibly a little bit too long. I think he'd be moving a bit faster than that. So what we can do to adjust that rather than adjusting all the different keyframes, I think I might just decrease this just down to, let's try four seconds, so 120 frames, and we'll just play through that again. That's possibly still a little too fast, so let's take it down to three seconds. So I'm gonna drag, all I'm doing is dragging this right hand keyframe uh, to the left, and you can either do that here in this timeline or in the main timeline window, you can just adjust the speed or the duration of that particular transition between keyframes there. So let's go back to the beginning. Yeah, I think actually three frames is probably gonna, or three seconds is gonna be much better. So I'm just gonna change this to 90 so we don't have any kind of extraneous timeline to be bothered by. And we've got that going. Now what we want to do is apply one of our motion sources, one of those moves we made previously. Um, so to do this, I'm actually gonna get a bit closer to the bot and I want to see him so I can actually see what the the kind of movements are looking like. So let's take him back to the beginning and just scoot over so I can see pretty much what's going on. Now I don't need to see the very first couple of frames, um, but I'd like to be able to see this. So what we need to do now is we need to take our bot and I'm going to right click it and choose Cinema 4D Tags Motion System you might only just see the start of that in this video, but it's there. It's the one with the three blue bars with the shorter one in the middle. That's the motion system. That's applied a tag to our bot. And what we can now do is we can drag up our timeline. And if we hit the space bar, we can go from F curve mode to, uh, and hit it again. And we're now in the motion system mode. Now I'm just going to increase this so we can see it. So I'm going to right click in this part of the left hand part of the panel here and click load motion source and if I go to my motion clips folder which will be inside your assets folder I'm going to choose the walk simple and I'm just going to double click that to open it and I'm going to drag that so until you get the little square with the plus sign in it on top of our bot and you can open that up if you want there and we've got our motion layer and our simple walk and at the moment this is stretched to the extent of our timeline but what I want this to do is go to about frame 30 and then I'm just going to drop a new one on the timeline and I'm just going to overlap them by one or two frames and I'll take this to 60 and then I'll do the same again. Overlap one or two frames and take this to the end of our scene, so to 90. And now if I scrub through here, just slowly we should see some motion on there let's get a better view so we can see he's actually moving because he should kind of waddle side to side slightly as he moves and yeah you can see the arms are starting to lift if I get a little bit closer for you you'll be able to see that more clearly so you can see that the head's tilting the body's bending over as he kind of makes his way and that's his kind of version that's the the robot version of a, a kind of a, a hip swing I suppose you would call it if you were doing a, a biped character then that's what you'd have so we've got this motion now. Um, now, what we need to add to this is a camera because at the moment we're just using our standard viewport tools. But you can already see how this is starting to pan out. This is starting to look pretty good already. Now, I'm going to use a reasonably wide lens for this. So I'm gonna get in a bit closer because I want to see the detail, but I also want to kind of enhance that feeling of uh, a big cavernous space and him feeling quite small and lonely and a little bit worried about what's going on and to do that I want to keep a lot of the room in the shot even with him reasonably close so let's add a camera to the scene and I'm doing this at frame zero with the kind of frame that I want now as in the last video I suggested that you could just bring in your interface until you can see what you kind of wanted to see now I can do that here. I usually don't like to have such a, a large space here um, to the right because that's kind of wasted screen real estate. But just for this quick little shot here, I think it's probably quite wise. Um, so I'm just going to 
zoom in until I've got the kind of framing I like. Um, but I am going to reduce down the size of that lens uh, or the, the focal length of the lens. And I'm going to take it to, let's say, probably 22 millimeters or it's just 22 units in, in this, the way I've got it set up. But that will help because it means that I can still see a lot of space and the robot's still fairly prominent in the in the shot and I want to keep this pillar here just kind of in the left hand side just as a kind of framing device more than anything else um, and another reason that you might want to use a wider lens is because it kind of distorts the all the uprights all the vertical lines are kind of converging at the top um, with that extra kind of perspective that you get and that really helps to make him feel just a little bit smaller as well so I'm going to take my camera and I'm just going to use rotation and position keyframing. I'm going to add a keyframe there and I go to the end of my scene. So that's frame 90 and I'm just dragging to the left here and I'm going to add a keyframe there. Now we might find that we need to adjust the curve to a more linear motion curve or the velocity curve using the timeline tools like we did before and um, just so that the camera now matches the motion of the robot but we might be all right we might get away with it so press play and we'll see that he moves across the scene and actually that was quite nice the camera's kind of quite constant um, although there is a slight ramping down and ramping in at the beginning which I'm not massively fond of so I might actually just go to my timeline window, hit the space bar, choose my camera and go to key linear and we'll just see what this looks like. Yeah, I prefer this because there's the nice progressive movement of the robot going across our scene or across our field of view anyway. Um, and I think that works better. And then when we cut to the next camera, we'll be looking at it in front. So this is our camera set up, our pivot object which we haven't really done a huge amount with just now, just two simple keyframes. But in fact, we've only added four keyframes to this whole scene. And we've got all this animation with the robot waggling his arms, wiggling his hips as he walks, and all those kind of secondary motions is a slight wiggle that he's got as he kind of rolls along. Um, and that's all with four keyframes. Now, that's not quite true, because if we look in our timeline, uh, hit the space bar, we've got our three copies of the motion system here of the the walk simple motion clip um, but if we go in into if press spacebar again go into the keyframe mode we've got the walk simple with all the broken down keyframes here and that's you know kind of I'm not going to count them all but there's probably 40 or so keyframes there but we've not had to worry about them we've saved them and we can use them in any shot we want any shot that's got this robot in it we can use those for and we'll just have two simple keyframes So if you also look at the start and end point, you can see how we're kind of really establishing his kind of loneliness and isolation um, because the camera starts a little bit closer to him. Um, and even though he's just moving across our field of view, he's also moving further away from it or we're moving further away from him, which helps to sell that kind of isolation. You can already see by this point, we're kind of filling far less of the frame with him. And by here, that's much more exaggerated. And you probably don't notice it as the viewer. You don't go, all oh, the camera's moving back. But it, I think it really does help. But before we do that, make sure that you go File, Save As. And we're going to go to Milk 9. And I'm just going to save this in Scene Files. And I'm going to call this Shot 002. And I had already made a ser uh, shot 002, that's fine, I'm going to replace that. Uh, you won't have that there. So just ignore that. Um, but that's all done now, and we can continue on to our next shot. <laughs> 